the Chatier's principle is applicable only to reversible reactions. In reversible reactions, reactants react to form the products and products react to form the reactants again. They are represented by a reversible arrow. At the start of the reaction, the rate of forward reaction is very fast and the backward reaction takes place at a negligible rate. But after some time, the rate of forward reaction becomes equal to the rate of reverse reaction. At this stage, dynamic equilibrium is established. The reversible reactions present a challenge to industry. This is because they never go to completion. As every time the reactants react to form the products, another molecule of the product decomposes back to reactant. Thus, the amount of product never increases. Le Chatelier's principle provides a possible solution to encourage the formation of desired product. According to this principle, if a reversible chemical reaction at dynamic equilibrium is disturbed by changing the conditions, the system will act to oppose the change and restore the equilibrium. Thus, changing conditions shifts the equilibrium position in a direction which favors the formation of products. Let's see the effect of change in concentration, pressure, volume and temperature on the position of catalyst in direction of reaction. To study the effect of change in concentration, let's consider a system at dynamic equilibrium. When the concentration of reactants is increased, the equilibrium is disturbed. The reactants react to produce more products to minimize the effect of this change. Thus, increase in the concentration of reactants favors the forward reaction which leads to the formation of more products and it shifts the equilibrium position to right. In this way, dynamic equilibrium is restored. Likewise, the removal of product from the reaction mixture disturbs the equilibrium position. To minimize the effect of this change, the reaction goes in the forward direction and equilibrium position shifts to the right, resulting in the formation of more product. In this way, dynamic equilibrium is restored. On the contrary, the removal of reactant molecules from the reaction mixture also disturbs the equilibrium but in a different way. The reversible reaction is favored in which the products decompose back to the reactants and equilibrium position shifts to left. In this way, dynamic equilibrium is re-established. Similarly, the addition of product in the reaction mixture at dynamic equilibrium disturbs the equilibrium and favors the reversible reaction to restore the dynamic equilibrium. Thus, addition of the product favors the reverse reaction while removal of the product favors the forward reaction. Change in pressure mostly affects the equilibrium position of gaseous reactions. This is because gases are highly compressible compared to liquids and solids. According to Boyle's law, increase in the pressure decreases the volume. So, effect of change in the pressure and volume can be studied side by side. Let's consider an example of a reversible reaction taking place in the contact process for the formation of sulfur trioxide. But before going into details, keep in mind that in gaseous reactions, the number of moles in balanced chemical equation can be taken as volume in cubic centimeters. Thus, in the formation of sulfur trioxide, where 2 moles of sulfur dioxide react with 1 mole of oxygen gas to produce 2 moles of sulfur trioxide, I can say that 2 volumes of sulfur dioxide react with 1 volume of oxygen gas to produce 2 volumes of sulfur trioxide or 3 volumes of reactants react to produce 2 volumes of the product. Thus, the reaction proceeds in the forward direction with a decrease in volume or I can say increase in pressure. This suggests that the high pressure favors forward reaction and the low pressure favors the reverse reaction. So this reaction must take place at a high pressure to get the maximum amount of sulfur trioxide. 
Similarly, Haber's process also proceeds in the forward direction with the decrease in volume or increase in pressure. Thus, high pressure favors the forward reaction and shifts the equilibrium position to right to get the maximum yield. Now let's see how the decomposition of ammonia is affected by the change in pressure. According to balanced chemical equation, two volumes of ammonia decompose to produce four volumes of the product. Thus the reaction proceeds in the forward direction with the increase in the volume or decrease in pressure. Thus we can infer that in this case low pressure would favor the forward reaction and shift the equilibrium position to right to get the maximum yield. These examples show how we can get desired products by monitoring pressure, but there are some reactions in which changing pressure would not give us the desired product. They include the reactions in which the total number of moles on the reactant side are equal to the number of moles on the product side in the balanced chemical equation. For example, hydrogen gas and iodine gas react together to produce two volumes of hydrogen iodide. The number of the moles on the reactant and the product sides are equal. As the reaction proceeds in the forward direction without any change in the volume, so the pressure would not have any effect on its equilibrium position. After discussing all aspects of changing pressure on equilibrium, let's study how temperature change can affect the dynamic equilibrium. One should keep in mind that some of the reactions take place by absorbing heat energy and are called endothermic reactions, while there are some other reactions in which the formation of the products involves the release of heat, and such reactions are known as exothermic reactions. In a reversible reaction, if the forward reaction is exothermic, then the reverse reaction would be endothermic and vice versa. The Haber's process for the formation of ammonia involves a reversible exothermic reaction. Let's assume heat as one of the products. Increase in the temperature would favor the backward reaction, and decrease in temperature would favor the forward reaction. Hence, in the Haber's process, low temperature favors forward reaction and the high temperature favors the backward reaction. Thus, temperature of the reaction mixture is kept low to increase the amount of the product in an exothermic reaction. However, the decomposition of ammonia back to the reactants involves an endothermic reaction. Now, if heat is considered as one of the reactants, an increase in the temperature would favor the forward reaction and a decrease in temperature would favor the backward reaction. Thus, in endothermic reactions, high temperature favors the forward reaction and results in the maximum yield. Thus, the temperature affects the equilibrium position differently in the endothermic or exothermic reactions. Now, let us study the effect of addition of a catalyst to the reaction mixture at dynamic equilibrium. A catalyst increases the rates of both the forward and backward reaction. Therefore, addition of the catalyst has no effect on position of equilibrium. It only helps the system to reach the equilibrium faster. Up till now, we have studied the effects of changing the conditions on the equilibrium position. Now, let's wrap up our lecture through this table. An increase in the reactant concentration favors the forward reaction and shifts the equilibrium position to right. A decrease in the reactant concentration favors the backward reaction and shifts the equilibrium position to left. Removal of the product favors the forward reaction and shifts the equilibrium position to right. Addition of the product favors the backward reaction and shifts the equilibrium position to left. However, addition of the catalyst increases the rates of both the forward and backward reactions equally, so it does not have any effect on position of equilibrium. In case of exothermic reactions, increase in the temperature favors backward reaction and shifts equilibrium position to left, whereas a decrease in temperature favors the forward reaction and shifts the position of equilibrium to right. In case of an endothermic reaction, an increase in the temperature favors the forward reaction and shifts the position of equilibrium to right. A decrease in temperature favors the backward reaction and shifts the equilibrium position to left. I hope you understand the topic well.